Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Richard Feynman said, Religion is a culture of faith. Science is a culture of doubt. But the New York Times has a different opinion. They recently ran this article, Your Climate Actions in 2023. We asked how the past year had shaped your thinking about climate and your plans for the next 12 months. Today, we share some responses. All of the responses they provided were very predictable. Like this one, my personal choices with solar panels, buying an electric vehicle, cutting out air travel and eating less meat weren't doing enough to alleviate my anxiety. The best thing they could do to alleviate their anxiety would be to cancel their subscription to the New York Times. And then there was this response from Australia. The accumulation of scientific data leaves no room for doubt about climate change. The change in weather patterns in Australia reinforces that we have stepped over a line into uncharted territory. Two years ago, we struggled through a 10-year drought cycle that ended when an extended La Nina pattern emerged. Now on the coast, we have La Nina delivering relentless rain and flood cycles. So Bernard Vance says that the switch from dry to wet in Australia was caused by the burning of fossil fuels. Here's a similar article from 1846 on the change of climate. The great changes have taken place in the climate of Australia, all testimonies satisfactorily prove. They said that heavy rain and flooding was proof of climate change in 1846, and the Aborigines said that the climate had undergone this change since white men arrived in the country. Blaming white men has always been popular among climate alarmists and the left in general. Here's another article from the Brisbane Courier from 1871. Imaginary Changes of Climate Three consecutive years of drought, while they have stimulated the inventive resources of practical agriculturalists, have had the natural effect of calling forth a plentiful crop of speculation from weather prophets and projectors and half-instructed meteorologists. In all the philosophic tribe of Laputa in general, to whom the periodical press now affords such fatal facilities. Every season is sure to be extraordinary, almost every month one of the driest or wettest or windiest coldest or hottest ever known. Much observation, which ought to correct a tendency to exaggerate, seems in some minds to have rather a tendency to increase it. In 2008, the Bureau of Meteorology's Head of Climate Analysis announced the permanent drought in Southeast Australia. And then two years later, it rained so much in Australia that the excess water accumulating on land caused global sea level to drop. The reality is that beyond all the human superstitions is that the climate of Australia has always alternated between flood and drought. Here's an article from the Sydney Morning Herald from 1876 detailing the drought and flood cycles in Australia from 1789 to 1864. In 1908, Dorothy McKellar published this very famous poem about Australia, My Country. I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons, I love her jewel sea, her beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me. The reality is that Bernard Vance apparently doesn't know the history of Australia, and he's spreading climate superstition. The same superstitions which people have been spreading since at least 1846 in Australia. The New York Times is more than happy to dumb down the readers in their ongoing quest to demonize fossil fuels. It should be obvious that buying an electric vehicle and eating less meat is not going to prevent bad weather. But the New York Times is more than happy to take advantage of and showcase their fan club of useful idiots. Toto's been pulling back the curtain on New York Times climate fraud for the past 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.